Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a review to do for you on the Kershaw Bel Air. So this is dropping today, January 15th, and I am excited about it. They sent me one of these to check out a little early, and I'm really appreciative of Kershaw for that, or Kai USA for that. And, um, you know, my initial thought was, ugh, another US-made crossbar lock, you know. Um, but when I flicked the knife open and I looked at it, I said, okay, now I'm interested. Look at that blade shape. This is my blade shape. <laughs> like that's what I want in every knife, basically. Um, I love a sheep's foot blade, but you get a little bit of belly there. You get a nice pronounced tip that you can, uh, do utility cutting with. But again, you have that little bit of belly for better slicing and stuff. It's just a very versatile blade. And then on top of that, it has this gorgeous aluminum, uh, these gorgeous aluminum scales to it. Um, and unlike some other knives in this category from U.S. makers, this has a little bit of weight to it. It's not heavy, but it doesn't weigh nothing. It's not made out of FRN. It's not, you know, uh, crazy light. You know, this probably weighs three ounces or three and a half ounces, which is great, you know, it just feels substantial in the hand. It feels real. And then you still have a really slim blade, slim profile, reversible clip. And yeah, to me, this is the best crossbar lock made in the United States right now. Uh, hands down. I, I can't think of another one that I, I even remotely care about. Uh, you have models from Tactile, Benchmade, Hogue, just none of them do it for me personally. It doesn't mean they're not good knives. I know a lot of people love the Deca, the Bug Out, the Maverick. And there's a new one from Hogue, I think called the Mystic or something, and that looks cool, but this is it, guys. And the coolest thing about this is it's in Magna Cut Steel. It's made in Tulatin, Oregon in their shop, and it looks like the uh, retail price is going to be somewhere around 150 to 175 bucks. I mean, what else can you ask for? I mean, sure, you might want titanium, but I'm telling you, this aluminum is phenomenal. It, this one, I don't know what colors will be available. This one's like a champagne colored aluminum. And I have beat the ever loving shit out of this uh, aluminum. I mean, I had to uh, heat it um, to get the screws out, which is one of my complaints we'll talk about. I dropped it a few times. I used this a whole lot cutting down cardboard and other stuff because we remodeled a bathroom. I didn't do the remodeling, but I had to take care of all the uh, empty boxes and packages and shit from it. It was a lot of stuff, and this did 70% of the work. Um, I'm going to include a cut test video at the end of this because I thought that would be kind of nice um, for you guys to see on this. I know, I don't know, I just felt like America made all that stuff. You guys would want to see it. And I feel like this is a user type knife. Um, so I will include that at the end. Uh, and I think it shows how good this knife is. Now, in that video, I prefaced that I used this knife for a lot of cardboard and tape and stuff like that when I was cutting that stuff down. And all I did was strop it after. I'm not the best in terms of that. Um, I stropped it and then I did the cut testing and I'll go grab paper. We'll see if we can even cut with it anymore. I had it back to cutting paper pretty reliably. Uh, before that cut test video, but it wasn't like, you know, out of the box. Yeah. I mean, this is after, um, this is after an absolute ton of cardboard. And you'll see in that video, most of the cardboard was double walled, like thick. I mean, we're talking boxes for, you know, three foot pieces of glass for toilets, for um, vanities. Like these aren't small Amazon boxes, you know what I mean? So it did a lot of work and it's still after a, a, a terrible strop job, um, it still cuts really, really well. So um, I do want to get it sharpened. I may either send it off or I will um, try to do it myself here. 
I am thinking about putting this in my pass around group. I love this knife so much that I don't really want to, I don't really want to send it off because a lot of times what happens is I'll never see the knife again or I'll get it back six months later and it's just not, doesn't feel the same um, to me. Like then I'm like, eh, I could just move on from it. Um, and I really love this. So I want to keep it around, but I think other people should experience it. And I kind of have a philosophy with this channel that if a company provides me with a knife, then I like to pass it around to spread the love. It helps the company who sent it to me get more exposure. It helps other channels get reviews. So uh, I think I just decided I will pass it around. Maybe I'll buy another one for myself. I don't know yet, but somebody in that pass around, I'm sure can sharpen it for us. That's kind of what I'll ask. Maybe the first person on the list, if they are a sharpener would be nice. Okay, shutting up about that um so i have a couple of complaints um the biggest one is the clip so not the clip the uh the screw so when you go to reverse this clip which you have to on a crossbar lock knife you have to be able to reverse a clip right so you just take that bottom screw out that goes right into the liner no problem then you take this screw out well this screw is on a um it's on a barrel in there connected to this screw, okay? And unfortunately, they Loctited the ever-loving piss out of this knife. Uh, everything was globbed with Loctite. So that would be my one big thing of feedback to Kershaw or Kai is just ease up on the Loctite. Um, I get it. You want to make sure it stays, you know, together. But if you're going to do that, at least tell the uh, assembly team not to Loctite the screws for the clip because you you put a reversible clip system on here and then I could not reverse it. Um, you'll see, uh, I think I did a disassembly video where I showed everything I had to do to get that screw out. I heated it. I, like I had to do a lot to get it out. Um, and once I got it, you know, whatever, I had to take the whole knife apart is what happened. Um, I had to take the whole knife part so that I could get to this barrel and hold it with a pair of Knipex, and then I was able to unthread that screw. Um, so, you know, you don't want people taking the whole knife apart to sw swap a clip. And most people aren't going to do that. Um, I will say that since I took it apart, I did put skiff bearings in here, and then I did put stronger springs in as well. I tested stronger springs. So, the springs that come with it are not terrible. Um, they're on the lighter side. So that would be my other thing for Kai or Kershaw is try to get some stronger springs for the crossbar lock. I think people like that in general a little bit more than softer ones. It was definitely serviceable. It was fine. I could have lived with it. But this really dialed it into my preferences, which is the key word there, preference. So those are my two things of feedback for them is just uh, no Loctite on the clip screws and the body screw for the clip on the other side and then uh, stronger springs. But other than that, man, this thing is a banger. And what I wanted to show you here is I've been carrying this uh, left handed now for, you know, a couple weeks and it was set up right handed when I got it, obviously. And you can see after uh, taking it off, flipping the clip. You can barely see where it's like one mark there. Uh, you can barely see it. And the reason I mentioned that is because I was telling you how much I love this aluminum. So let me just see if a little bit of alcohol here. Because it has been a couple of weeks versus like a couple days the way I had it the other way. There you go. So, I mean, if you flipped it back and forth, it wouldn't be the end of the world. You can see those two little dots there. Um, less so over here because, again, I didn't carry it much right-handed. But that's a good thing to know because a lot of times as a lefty, you get a knife with a reversible clip. That's great. And then you flip it, and then your show side has this ugly mark all over it from the way the clip was initially. Um, and that bothers some people. You know what I mean? I don't know if I have a good example of it here. Um, grab a couple knives. No, I usually reverse it right away, so I don't have that problem. Anyway, um, let's put this back on. So we want it on the left-hand side. Well, you know what? I'll put it on the right-hand side because um, 
I'm gonna, I said I'm gonna pass it around. And this is the review, which means, you know, we are done reviewing it. So let me get this. Are these the same is my question? Yes, so it doesn't matter. Put this on. And I'll admit, I, I'm not really one of the people that cares about that mark. Maybe because I am left-handed, it just doesn't bother me. Um, but it can definitely bother people. Uh, so I do have a full disassembly video on this. If you're interested, uh, you can see what skiffs fit in here and all that good stuff. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it was like one millimeter size. Uh, but it, it came dead centered. It still is after disassembly. I mean, uh, it, it really is a very well-made knife. It's not easy to revert, uh, swap the springs. You could swap this side real easy, um, but you have to get the whole knife apart because this pivot has to come out. Um, and then you have to get this scale off, and then you can mess with the spring. So it's nice that the spring is on the outside of this, but uh, you know you still have to take these scales off. And then I highly recommend you find something to put through there and hold the blade in place. Uh, you know you can just use one of these. Make sure you pop the pivot out and keep this in there, and that'll help you be able to get it back together easier. You'll see in that video. I don't recommend you take it apart, uh, really, unless you really know what you're doing, uh, which I necessarily don't I'm not the biggest crossbar lock guy so um yeah but anyway the ergonomics are uh, just outstanding they're so comfortable in hand uh back here you have this little finger groove right here and then everything just falls in place for me personally uh large glove size hand and then you could choke up like this and you just get a perfect choke up grip what I like about it is I'm not bopping into the edge termination here but I'm covering it. So when I go to cut, I'm not leading any material into the choil, where a lot of times that's what happens. There's actually another knife from Kershaw releasing today. Uh, where do I, here it is. The Launch 19. And I also really like this knife. Um, I'll do a video on this next. But if you see when I choke up on this, you have that exposed area of edge termination. So when you go to cut, it's easy to lead material right here and get caught and then you don't cut. Where with this, you're covering it. Your finger guides that material right to the edge, which is great. Um, so that is awesome. Ergonomics are good. The jimping's right here and it's effective. It's in a good spot. Um, you know me, I always like a little out here too, but not everybody's going to do that. This black wash is gorgeous. Um, this is one of my favorite black washes I've seen. Um, and you can see after all that cardboard and everything, I just wiped it off with some KPL knife shield and it cleans right up. It has natural, you know, uh, stone pits in it and stuff like that from the watch, the stone wash. It's great. Uh, you have the USA logo. I did confirm it's made in Tulatin, Oregon by... Kershaw. It is not OEM'd because I thought originally it would be OEM'd. Nope. It is made by Kershaw in their Tooletin, Oregon shop where the ZTs are made. Then you have model 6105, Kai USA, or maybe that's a serial number. I'm not sure. Magna Cut, Kershaw over here. You have these thumb studs that work very, very well. Um, you have a lanyard hole back here. And I'm not going to. Um, say that it's you know the most original looking handle it definitely has uh, bug out vibes but you know what a lot of knives do because that's just a that's a very uh basic handle shape if you want a handle shape that goes with this blade right you kind of end up with it especially if you want a lanyard hole you kind of end up with a similar style right um and if you want it to be thin right? Not too tall and all that stuff. This is kind of where a lot of people end up. I mean, that new Hogue looks a lot like it too. Um, but this blade shape is, is very different. And it's, I'm so glad they went with this over just a traditional drop point. Uh, as much as I like a drop point like that, this is really, uh, up my alley. You guys know I'm a big fan of these, uh, spear foot 
type blades, um, something Colin really likes to design. And uh, we still need to do one with Devo, but we haven't yet. So that is the uh, Kershaw Bel Air. I, I, you know, I, I, like I said earlier, I'm not the biggest proponent of these USA made uh, folders for a lot of reasons. And it's not because I don't want them to be good. <laughs> And it's not because I don't want, I don't like USA Made. I love USA Made. I want things made here. It's just that usually the value to quality proposition is much worse on USA Made. It just is. Um, but in this case, you're talking, you know, around 150, 175 retail. I think they told me it was 250 MSRP. But then dealers, you know, they're going to sell it for less or whatever. Um, but I think it's going to be, you'll pay somewhere around 150 to 175 And you're getting aluminum scales and you're getting uh, magna cut steel, at, I assume at like 62 to 64 or 62 to 63, something good. I would, I would assume that Kershaw has, you know, figured that part out by now from the community. Um, and these beautiful aluminum scales. Now, sure, it's not titanium, but again, it's 150 bucks or whatever. This aluminum, I would take over so many titanium knives that I have. This, I, I can't, that's like the thing I can't explain enough in this video is how good these scales are. They're, they're just amazing. Um, hopefully you guys will figure that out when you get one, because you should. Um, I love the little milling up here. I love the pivot. They just did a really good job on this. And uh, there's not much more for me to say. It cuts great. It's slim. It's light enough, but not cheap feeling. It's built extremely well. Um, and it's my favorite. Oops. It's my favorite USA made knife in a long time. Uh, I'm trying to think of it. I'm sure there's something out there that I really like. Um, I'd say the last USA made knife that I fell in love with like this was the Slim Midi from Medford. And I'm waiting for them to make lefty Slim Midis in Tanto, but that's a $600 knife or whatever. This is 150 bucks. So the, the value is there, right? You look at the bug out, you're getting a bug out in FRN for this price. The Maverick, you're paying 300, 360 or whatever for, for, uh, you know, even I think G10 is probably 300. I'm not sure. Uh, the Hogs, I think I saw a pre-order. They were around 250 to 300 or something uh, for the same materials. So Magna Cut, aluminum, uh, extremely well made for 160. I mean, 150, whatever. You can't beat it. You just can't beat it. And um, yeah, I'm excited about it if you can't tell. So there you go. Check out the cut testing at the end here. And uh, I'll post that disassembly video in the next day or so as well. So you can check it out if you're interested. Um, again, my little nitpicks are the Loctite. Got to chill with the Loctite back here. That was brutal. Um, it was very frustrating because I could not get this screw out no matter how hard I tried. Um, and I'm left-handed. And with a, uh, with a crossbar lock, you have to be able to grab a clip to close it and and like just operate it well. Like sure, this knife works pretty well because you can just palm it. A lot of knives are more rounded and then they slip out. Um, but you got to be able to reverse the clip. So they obviously knew that. But then you know, so that and then um, the spring I would like to see stronger. Like you can see here with this spring, I don't have any like lash feeling and it's I can't chuck it out. Before I swap the springs, you could just. And it would fly out. And granted, that's no different than any other USA made crossbar lock. They all have soft springs. But I would love to see a company like Kershaw include maybe another set of stronger ones. But then you're kind of inviting disassembly, which they probably don't want. So I would just I would just dial it up a little bit. Just get a little bit of stronger springs. Because this just, oh, it just feels so good. You can reverse flick it. No, it's so good. So anyway... There it is, Kershaw Bel Air. Thank you to Kershaw for letting me check it out. I will pass it around. I love you guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about the new release from Kershaw. I'll link whatever I can. I don't have an affiliate link to Kershaw, obviously. I, maybe some of the dealers I work with do. I'm not making any money off of this. 
Um, you know, they did send me the knife, full disclosure, they sent me the knife, um, but I truly love it. You guys know all this by now, but I just want to point that out. Um, so I will link it where I can if, you know, I can find it for sale. I'm not sure what dealers will have it. I'm sure it'll be like Blade HQ and shit like that. So I'll link what I can, but I love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And, uh, oh, it comes in this box right here. That's your packaging. You get this. Maybe that is the model number there. And then it comes in a little thingy. You get this little QR code right here. And that's it. All right. So there you go. Love you guys. Have a great day. Hey guys, I totally realized I didn't give you any size comparisons on this, so I'm just going to throw that in real quick uh, in between my rambles. So we are looking at a, come on, catch that tip, son, 7.1, 7.2 inch, no, 7.1 inch knife. Um, blade length is 3.1. 3.1. Um, it's not a very tall knife. I mean, you're looking at, you know, three quarters of an inch on the handle. Overall, you're looking at three quarter, now uh, an inch and a quarter, maybe. Overall size comparisons. Here's a, a pair of three, so that'll help. That's one reason to keep this, huh? Size comparison. Um, there you go, next to the pair of three. So you're going to get more blade, but about the same handle on it, right? Uh, let me see what else I have that's like stuff people have. We have the Native 5 in fluted carbon fiber. It's another really good size comparison. It's a little bit smaller. Um, the Native 5 is a little bit smaller. I can grab, what do I have here? A Ferrum Forge Stinger. And something a little more expensive, Vero Synapse. These are all going to be in that similar size range right there. Those are three and a quarter, so maybe just slightly longer than it. But uh, you get the idea. So I just wanted to give you a, a size comparison real quick. And I, you know what? I'll give you a weight. Hang on. Yeah, I'm aware this is a shipping scale, but trust me, it works. So, just for reference, pair of three lightweight. 2.4 ounces. You can check that wherever you want. Here is the Kershaw Bel Air. 2.9, call it three ounces on this guy. So, absolutely fantastic. I love it. There you go. Just wanted to give you some specs. Sure. <clears throat> and I'm going to do some low rent cut testing for you guys. Um, I have a few knives here. <clears throat> Gonna start with the Kershaw Bel Air. This is the new crossbar lock from Kershaw. I absolutely love this knife. I got it dialed in with some stronger springs um, and skiffs, but I don't think it needed the skiffs. I just did that. But a uh, fantastic knife. This is my favorite uh, crossbar lock knife to come out. Uh, I do really like the Vosti Daxon too, Daxon, but this is just so carryable. Now, I want to preface this by saying I don't know how well it's going to do because uh, we recently remodeled our bathroom and I cut up like 60% of the cardboard with this. I did try to strop it after because uh, it did get a little bit dulled out and this is a factory edge. So, you know, I think if I was you know man enough to just sharpen it um get that sharpener out of the box finally we'd probably have a better test here i did strop it quite a bit um i tried some different emulsions i think uh like a 5 um or a 9 i can't remember and i got it cutting paper reliably but not like slicing like crazy like it was so i don't know i just want to put that out there i have a little bit of rope actually here so I bought this at Home Depot just to have rope around. I didn't even think it could be useful for videos, but I guess it could. Um, so I'm gonna try to just, you know, slice this here. 
This is Magna Cut. Um, not sure what the HRC is on it, but you can see we're getting a pretty clean cut there. And again, this is after um, using it for uh, quite a bit, honestly. Um, that was the front and the middle. Let's try this back section here. Yep, and that's probably where I cut most of the cardboard. So does pretty well on that. We could test it, I guess, pushing down on those, um, but we'll do that maybe in a second. Let's try to cut some of this cardboard up. Just gonna hit this corner right here and see. Yeah, I mean, it, it really slices through there. Uh, once you get the seam, I mean, I can't really say much more than a little bit of uh, push and keep going. I did find it's not this knife, it's uh, this cardboard. I noticed that this cardboard tends to want to bunch up like this. That I'm guessing is uh, technique. It's probably how I'm cutting, not perfectly straight or whatever, but here you can see, hopefully you can see this. Right, it'll bite in there. And, and that's pretty thick cardboard. What would you call that, double wall? So I think it cuts really well, especially for uh, taking out quite a bit of cardboard beforehand. Let's move over here. I'll see if I can do those little uh, choppy cuts for you guys. This is really hard because I can't see the camera, but I'm gonna attempt to do that over here. Move this tripod cover. Sorry, I was doing the video for this and decided to do all this. I'm gonna grab that stuff off the floor. All right, let's see where it lines up, right where the knife is, perfect. It's a little over to this side, there we go. So, right about here is where we would test it, I guess, right? Slice cuts. That was one little push. Push cuts, I should say, right? So that was three or four of them. Pretty, pretty good. I don't know how good this paracord is. Doesn't look too great. It's pretty cheap at Home Depot. We could try using kind of the tip here and then slicing through, and that works. It's not getting clean through unless I do that. Put a little pressure down, but that's fine. Uh, especially after, again, uh, using it a lot on a factory edge. As you guys very well know, a factory edge on a pocket knife is never going to be as good as what you're going to put on it if you uh, sharpen. So, what the hell? Um, if, if you guys uh, sharpen, you're definitely going to get probably better results. But I'll say, for a guy who doesn't sharpen, uh, and use this knife a lot, it's fantastic. The edge seems great. I think the heat treat's good, and it's thin. So it's not like, you know, you have some thick bruiser you can beat on, but honestly, what I meant to say is it's not like you have some thick bruiser, but you can beat on it. Like, I was going through thick-ass cardboard with it. There's no play at all. It's still got great action. It's dead nut centered. Like, I love this knife. There's nothing more I can say. You should buy this. Um, if you guys know me, you know I'm not the biggest advocate for crossbar locks. Honestly, not the biggest advocate for these American-made knives that cost a lot of money for usually less, you know? I love American knives. That's not the issue. But usually you're getting a lot less quality for a lot more money. In this case... I think retail, they said, was going to be around 150, 170 bucks. This aluminum is the best aluminum I've ever handled. Um, I've scratched the shit out of this, doing everything and dropping it and whatnot, and it hasn't marked up once. Um, I heated it, trying to get the screw out, and nothing. It's just held up great. The blade design is perfect for me, um, and the ergonomics are astounding. So anyway, that's my uh, Kershaw Bel Air rant. Love it. So there's some cut testing for you. Hopefully it helps. Love you guys. Peace.